What it's going to do is it says, hey, I've got three basically dimensions for you, mm -hmm. okay? Because it's trying to break these down into dimensions, okay? And so if I look at scores, I've got, I've got good and bad, okay? But I've got a lot of overlap here and I've got some outliers, mm -hmm. okay? And if I use the up arrow key, I can, look at, I can look at the other dimension. I've got a lot of real outliers here. You know, if I want to look at this in a 3D, three dimensional model, you know, huh. it's, there's my ellipse of most of the groupings. I've got some that are like way out here in left field, right? Mm -hmm. I gotta, I gotta go see what's going on there, right? What we're trying to do is get rid of some of that stuff, mm -hmm. but we want to do it with some thought, right? We don't want to just say, oh, well, that, that's crap data. Get rid of it. Well, you don't know. Just looking at this. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and. Kill that off. Um, there's also a loadings thing. So remember, we were kind of talking about, you know, doing a, like the X and Y. Mm -hmm. So what it might do is it might plot a Y kind of on this, this zero axis right here. And so the things that are, you know, very close to it are actually driving it good or bad. Mm -hmm. They're very correlative. The stuff in the middle is almost not correlating at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, in a, in a PCA um, analysis, we're going to be looking for that, mm -hmm. especially when we're doing Y compared to X. Like if I wanted to look at this quality parameter as the Y, mm -hmm. which X's seem to drive it, then I, would, then I would be looking more at this kind of a graph, okay? And here I'm not. Mm -hmm. So here I'm lo literally looking more at the discriminant, like between the two groups is really what I want, okay? So that's another kind of a, a, a thing here. All right. So there's two kinds of um, mathematical operations that you can do. One is called the Hotelling's T-square. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the other one is D mod X. Okay. So we're going to look at those. And this is going to help us find the outliers. Don't ask me to explain the math. I don't understand it. Don't ask me any more about it. If you want to go look it up, you can go look it up. Anybody who's watching this, you can go look it up. Okay, <laughs> I don't know. This is, this is like if you're a true data scientist, you're probably like pulling your hair out. Like, why don't you understand this? Look, I'm I'm more of a controls engineer. I'm using these tools. And I'm trying to find the outliers. As long as I know this helps me find the outlier that's a good thing, right? So don't get on me. Don't hate on me. I'm not sure how many data scientists are going to find that, Hey, I, I've been connecting with a lot of data scientists on LinkedIn, and yeah. they're, they're probably going to be very disappointed they're, they're in what gonna I just said. They're going to throw a lot of hate at us? Yeah, they're, well, they're going to throw a lot of hate at me. Okay. You know, you don't know what you're talking about, okay? But the reality is, is, is these tools, I don't necessarily have to understand the mathematics behind mm -hmm. it. I do have to understand this is why I use it. Mm-hmm. And, and then, so what I'm looking at here is, this is kind of the mathematical, the, the T-square calculation on all the different batches, mm -hmm. okay? And you can see there are several really big outliers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go, like this is, um, this is a batch that was run uh, May 29th around 9, 12 p.m. That's when it started, okay? So if we look, like there's a, the wait time was way out of whack, okay? There's a, this particular uh, step time was way out of whack. That receive time was way out of whack. They waited at the reactor, you know, they waited at, um, this was a, probably a flow. It was way out of whack or as a wait, I can't remember. So there's a whole bunch of stuff just way out of whack, yeah. right? Compared to normal. Right, and that, and and what it's saying is is outside um, three sigma, right? Is that's the yellow coloring? Wow. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that's just really jacked up in that one, right? So let's let's double click on this one too. This one was probably back like February, kind of same thing. We have a whole bunch of stuff missing. Yep. You know, so I've already done done some of this analysis. You know, I, I can pretty much tell you these are just like way out of whack, and they're going to throw your model off. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to this red line, which should get, I think it's like 99%. Okay, and it's drawn yeah. some cool little histograms and stuff. And I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to exclude those. Okay, so it excludes those and says, oh, guess what? You have a new model now. Okay. Right? So I took you from 680 observations down to 670. Okay, so now I've seen a lot of the Simca guys, they'll, they'll do like 
two demand two components first and then I'll add components. Mm -hmm. I was taught just to use the auto fit. Where you get into trouble is when, you know, you run it and it has twenty eight components and it takes like ten minutes to run. Yeah. That means is really struggling to figure out, you know, any kind of relationships mm -hmm. here. Okay. Okay. So when you see something that has lots and lots of components, you're gonna it's not gonna be a really reliable model. Okay, and, and I'm going to show you something else here on this. The other thing is you're looking for a higher score. The higher this score is, okay. the better chance you have that there's correlation here. Mm -hmm. So like if you have 28 components and nothing's higher than 0.3, yeah. you have a really muddy model and you're not going to really find a lot. You're going to have to eliminate some things. Okay, so anyway, we're better. Okay, the, 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 you know, this is good. So let's look at the scores. Okay, I don't have quite so many outliers now. Okay, not, not too bad. Okay, I do have some separation. Okay, let's go back to hotelings. Okay, you know, same kind of thing. I've already done, you know, some of this research, so I'm not gonna bore everybody, but I, I'm, I'm gonna come down just below that line. Okay, I'm gonna exclude those. And I'm gonna go through the same process. I'm trying to weed out all the outliers that are gonna drive the model nuts. Right, so I've got you know I still got some outliers. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of some of these. Okay, I'm gonna rerun hotelings. Oops, make sure I actually have the right one. I'm gonna do a hotelings on this one. Okay, so we're looking better. You know we're getting things kind of in this. I'm gonna come down. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get some of these. And like I said, I've done, done mm -hmm. the research. And hey, here's one. It only has two different values. Yeah, I'm going to exclude that one, right? Okay, so auto fit. Okay, we're still in, you know, three components. You know, we're, our, our um, scores are pretty high. So this is good, okay? I have a lot less outliers. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm starting to see group, you know, separation here. This is good. Okay, hotelings, we're all below the red line. We're all below this 99% threshold. You know, if I want to get below 95, I mean, I guess I could do that. Let's, let's just try that. I don't think I did that on any of my runs. You know, so I can exclude this. So basically, we're just getting rid of outliers here, mm -hmm. right? So now I've gone from 680 rows of data mm -hmm. or observations down to 631. Okay, I'm going to auto fit that. Okay, again, you know, staying in pretty good, you know, three components. Okay, let's take a look at 3D, how this is looking. Okay. You know, so so it's interesting is I do have this outlier, which we remember that was January. Yep. Right. Okay. This was October. Mm -hmm. Right. And what's interesting is we we actually see some separation in October. You know, they're they're pretty independent. Right. I don't think I ever tried to separate them this much. So let's go look at scores. Now this is a two dimensional space. Right. So this is so this is like looking at it from one dimension, then it's flipped ninety degrees, if I remember right. Okay which is what helps you build that 3D model, okay? So, so anyway, we can kind of see, you know, see some separation here. Um, you know, some of the things, you know, let's go in and let's look at the D mod. You know, here again, you know, we're gonna, you know, we, we try to do our research and say, oh gosh, you know, we got, okay, this is a, the reactor pressure was way out of whack, the temperature was way out of whack, you know, there was a co-feed flow that was way mm -hmm. out of whack. Yeah, that's probably not going to be really conducive to having a good model. So let's let's knock off some of the stuff kind of along the top here. And the thing is, is a good a good data scientist looks at a lot of this mm -hmm. stuff. But here's where the data scientist doesn't necessarily understand. Like, okay, you know, what is that co-feed flow? What is that wait time? Like, they don't really know. We, since we've, you know, a lot of us have been controls engineers, we've been around plants, we can kind of say, you know, that's probably an outlier, you know, mm -hmm. if, if it sat in wait for very long or, you know, the temperature was like really high compared to normal, that's probably not going to be a good one for us. So we'll go ahead and exclude some through the DMOD process as well. Okay, auto fit that. And if any of you from Simca are watching this and I'm completely explaining this wrong, I'm really sorry. I'm trying to explain this to a, a more lay audience. I'm not trying to get too, too technical. Um, you know, so uh, I'm not trying to be, you know, and plus I've never really studied the math behind it, right? I'm trying to eliminate outliers. 
I just want, that's the message I'm trying to get across. So don't hate on me, please. <laughs> so, so now, you know, if we kind of look at the scores, you know, we can kind of see, you know, we've got one more component, you know, that we can look at. Let's kind of look at it from a 3D space again. You know, but the thing is, we don't have like those ones that are like really big outliers here, right? You know, I, I do have some that are that are kind of outside, you know, like here, you know, and here. So like one of the things, like if that really just drives me crazy, like, you know, some of the things I can do, like let's say I want to get rid of all of these. Okay. I can actually highlight them and then let's say I'm going to hold down control. I'm going to get that one. Um, I don't know. Are there any others now? All the others look pretty good. Right, so I'm gonna exclude those. 